Welcome to Top Dog Tips, where we delve into the dynamic world of small business in Canada. Uh, today, we have a special guest, serial entrepreneur Brad Warren, who's been instrumental in providing a lifeline to many struggling businesses. Brad's company, Our Invisible Empire, partners with businesses, and provides financial planning, digital marketing, administration, uh, resources, and support. So join Brad today as he shares lessons and advice on business success. So, hey, Brad, welcome to the show. Hey, Greg, how are you? Happy to be here. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Yeah, so listen, so Brad, uh, your company is Our Invisible Empire, and you work with a lot of businesses providing support and resources from financial to digital marketing to administration to hiring and staffing. So given that businesses are built to make money, um, what are three of the most common financial mistakes you're seeing being made by small businesses? Yeah, you know, the main three would be knowing your numbers. What I think would be number one. I mean, we meet with a ton of businesses and knowing at least the basic numbers. If you're not a pro in profit and loss or cash flow, then that's fine. But knowing the numbers, uh, basic numbers, having an idea of where you're at, the tracking, the review would be the second one. Um, things change. Employees change. It's just everything changes throughout the course of business. And you have to be able to pivot and adjust those forecasts and whatever data you are tracking. And then a big mistake that, you know, I can actually share because we made it. Um, don't get too caught up in the creative of it and don't get too caught up with using your own money. I mean, and not that you can't use your own money, but we used way too much of our own and it, it, it leverages you out. Try and try and use the bank's money, have a business plan, have, have a financial plan and, you know, try and deal with lenders any chance you can so that the business stays stable and have a healthy cash flow. What are some of the, uh, uh, unique challenges that that uh, you know people that want to work with you. What what do they face to us? What what's happening when they come to you? You know, and the start of it, and you, just to be blunt, I mean, they're not making money. That's usually where it all starts. They have three months left. They've ran out of cash flow. The wife's pressure. The business isn't working. They they don't want to shut it down, but they don't know what to do. It in one way or another, it revolves around they're not making enough money. Because most of the time, if businesses are doing very well and they're making tons of money, they're not generally not reaching out for help unless it's more marketing or whatever it may be. So it starts yeah. with not making money, but that's just the surface of it. It, it, it. There's so much more to it than usually what they think, because most people think they need a cash injection and their business will be fine. And, you know, like me right. and you even chatted before, it, that's like giving gambling addicts more money for the slot machine. And, and not to be disrespectful, but it, it just is what it is. Usually there's an underlying issue. Your labor's too high to your margins. You're paying too much for supply. You're getting hosed on marketing services. Your accountant isn't tracking your financials properly. The owner is working 12 hours a week and telling people he's working 50 and complaining that it's not working. There's so yeah. much more to it than just, I'm not making money. But that's where it starts. They come to us because they're not making money. And then mm -hmm. we don't judge and we dig in and find out what's actually going on. Yeah, it's uh, it really gets uh, sometimes you're just too close to the problem to see the uh, the forest or the trees or wherever the expression is. But yeah. you can't see something when you're too close to it. Right. Yeah. And it's exactly it's not that they don't want to. It's not that they're not open to admitting that there is a problem. It's that they're just not looking at it. They're, they're not mm -hmm. seeing it. Sometimes they don't even know a better way exists. Hey, I've been mm -hmm. using this marketing firm for eight years and these are my results. It's like you should shop them. Those aren't good results. Or my accountant's been doing it like this and it's my cousin's sister and it's been 10 years. And it's like, yeah, yeah you, you might want to maybe meet with a couple more accountants because that's not a good way of doing it. So uh, what, what, are, what are what are some of the, uh, the the ways you can help? What kind of outcomes can, can uh, people expect when they engage your services? They start making money because our business is based around that. We get paid and make money when the businesses make money. So we get to charge out the retainers and do that, but we do it at cost. We just charge out our staff at their cost. So when a business comes to us and they need a partner, they want to turn their business around, our staff becomes their staff. Now they don't need to go to a marketing firm. They now have an in-house marketing department. They don't need to go to an accountant because we own and have an in-house accounting department with CPA. So everything 
drops down instead of paying $85 an hour for your bookkeepers, you're now paying what those bookkeepers pay those bookkeepers. And then mm-hmm. if, if the business makes money, then we make money because we we'll take a percentage of the business. So collaboration, yeah. collaboration, trust, and the fact that we're not out, we can't make money unless you make money. So it's just, it's easy for them to wrap their head around it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I love that business model. You're bringing a, a comprehensive, whole, whole look, uh, holistic uh, uh, combination of resources and services you're sharing. And, and your business model is a skin in the game model. Yeah. So, you know what, it's, it's, uh, I can see why it resonates. And uh, so how, how many businesses are you up to right now? Oh, um, you know, I think it's 18, 18 or 19 now. Um, yeah, we have majority, I think majority ownership of nine or 10 and then minority yeah. ownership of eight or nine more. It'd be 18 or 19. If you include the e-commerce companies and you know, mm-hmm. the majority companies like our big ones, like Boulevard Auto Glass, White Raven Accounting, those are pretty big companies for us. So yeah, I think yeah. I think 19, as soon as Triple Barrel launches officially on January 1st, so 19. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, congratulations, that's that's amazing. So again, I can, I can see why that model has been successfully deployed. Um, yeah. Okay. So listen, if, if I'm going to utilize your services, how, what do you need for me? What 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 can I do to be prepared to be a better consumer of your services? What what should I come prepared to you with? Honesty, an open mind, um, a desire to actually fix it, and a mm-hmm. desire to find where the issues are and fix the issues. I think that's the benefit to working with us. Is if you come with us and you have six payday loans at Money Mart, we've seen it a million times. If you're not controlling your inventory, we've seen it. If yeah. you know if you have bad marketing, we've seen it. It's just you have to have an open mind because that's what we're here for. We're here to show you how you can fix it, but we can't bang our head against the wall. Cause like, you know, like we discussed previously, like owners, including myself, including anybody, they're very close to their business. And when they can't see it, they can't see it. You want to fill up your schedule from eight to four Monday to Friday. And you want to keep shoveling driveways or whatever it is, just using an example, you need a functional website. You don't need us. You don't need an accounting firm and a graphic design department. You don't want to scale. You don't want to go to cities. Like Mm -hmm. you just need a functioning website. Let us build you that. Why would you, why why would you talk percentages or partnership of your business when you don't want to do any of these things? And there's no shame in that. It's just know what you want and be Mm -hmm. honest with that. So, you know, again, you've got these 18 companies, uh, you've you've dealt with a lot of companies, you've turned down a lot, you accept a lot, maybe uh, share with us, with our audience, uh, a success story. One comes to mind and, and I hold them. I won't, you know, I'll keep privacy and it'll bet even though we're a pretty transparent group, but you know, and I hold them at a very high regard because they were one of the first deals that we did in a legitimate process. Like, you know, when you're starting out, I'm no different than anybody else. It's like you're begging people to work with you. Banks won't look at you. You know, everyone thinks you're crazy. And I'm sitting here being like, am I crazy? Like, I don't think I'm crazy, but maybe they're all right. But the first deal we did It was a company that had been around in Calgary for, I think, going on 25 years, in between 20 and 25. And it was a husband and wife running it. Uh, They were in their late 60s, just absolutely lovely human beings. And it was kind of a little family company, like in the peak of their business. They, I think they got up to six, seven, eight Mm -hmm. employees. Pandemic shot them in the foot, brought them quite back Mm -hmm. down again, but not as much as they thought. They just forgot to adjust their expenses to the revenue drop from the pandemic. And that, again, you just stop looking at things, right? And so we got involved. They were years of losses and decently significant losses. And I won't say how significant, but they were significant. Um, mm-hmm. And we got involved March 1st, a couple years ago. And within, I think it was within around 80 days. It was within 70 to 80 days they were profitable. And they were running losses on a significant level for nearly two and a half years, month after month. Yeah. Wow. And and, it, it, and honestly, it wasn't, it's not a disrespectful thing to them. It's just, it wasn't rocket science. You have too many people looking at too many areas, like, you know, having in-house CPA, my wife is a CPA accountant and we work very closely mm-hmm. together. And she went and looked at their financials and found a ton of stuff they did not need. We went and dug into their operations, dug into their marketing, dug into their online presence, their outside sales presence. And you start uncovering things very quickly. 
And that was kind of the deal that we did where I was like, okay, I, I'm not crazy. Let's keep going with this because we're not making any yeah. money and we're broke, but at least we're helping a lot of people in the process. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it, one, one of the things that cannot be <clears throat> understated, Brad, <clears throat> is the tremendous amount of relief that the, these people like this couple must feel just to, to have some answers and have some actions. And, you know, after, after facing a, 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 a barrage of digging yourself deeper with no real answers and that, I think the amount of uh, uh, relief and answers that you bring, is just uh, indescribable. It is. It, it's it, it, indescribable, such a great way to put it. And it's also, it fueled our passion moving forward because it, it, we love helping people. I mean, we have mm -hmm. to keep our business afloat and make money as well. But, you know, when you have people crying in your boardroom because you're uncovering very simple things that have been, they've been banging their head against the wall for a better half mm -hmm. of a year or two. They're scared. Their business is going under. Their kids can't mm -hmm. eat. They're going to have to go back to work. What are they going to do? Those aren't like small stresses in people's lives. Mm -hmm. Those are very large stresses in people's lives. And when you can kind of unlock that, and you look at them and say, this is not as bad as you think it is. This can be fixed. We'll help you fix this. It's extremely rewarding. You know what I mean? And I've never been one for a rewarding career. But in the last two, three years, that end of things, helping people has almost became more important to me than the money. It's taken a bit of a transition. Well, I, I, the other reality is you're, you're probably unhirable. <laughs> Oh, I, <laughs> unhirable in so I think I've been fired from every job I've ever had. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, unhirable in so many different ways. We could open that up in way too many ways. <laughs> uh, right on, right on. Okay, well, let's switch things up a bit. So, tell me, what's um, what, what's 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 your approach to business? What, what's what's your philosophy, and you know, what what uh, how did you get started doing what you're doing now? I got started, you know. I remember, and I said this in a different podcast I did a month or two ago, that I think even from when I was younger, like high school, I always wanted to start my own business. And then I had a mentor come in and kind of pull me. I was in a little bit of a bad spot in my early 20s. And he kind of pulled me over to this startup company that he had that had been going for two, three years at the time. And I ended up getting a chance to work within this company and grow within it. And so it gave me an opportunity to kind of be as close to an entrepreneur, I guess, in a sense with supervision. And I think that kept me from starting my own business. So I worked for that retail company. I was blessed to kind of grow with it as it scaled to different cities, different provinces, became publicly traded. And, and there was a lot of growth in the course of a decade. And I was blessed to get off tools and get into management at an early age. So that's kind of where my business career started was, I guess, opportunity meets hard work. Like I worked very hard, but the opportunity was given to me at a young age, which I was very lucky for. And then as soon as that company was sold, it got sold to a venture capitalist uh, firm. And then we worked out contracts, things happened there, moved on and pretty much had the idea for Invisible Empire right out the gate, planned it mm -hmm. and started it. So, I mean, it was kind of the old saying, I just kind of worked into it and then mm -hmm. started Invisible Empire in our early thirties. And we've been kind of grinding it out ever since. So, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. So what's, um, yeah, I guess looking back is there, is there a way to, it's probably not a fair question, but if you could sum up in a quick sentence, what, what, what is your most impactful lessons learned from your journey to date? Oh, wow. In a sentence? <laughs> My goodness. Um, three words. <laughs> three words. No, make it a sentence. Ah, uh, you know, the business has to make money. I mean, I, I think all the biggest mistakes I've made have been revolvent around putting the creativity or the growth or the scale or the branding and all that stuff ahead of the profit. And I think all new entrepreneurs go through that to an extent, maybe some the opposite, um, but the business has to make money. And that would be the biggest thing I could say is if, if you don't like doing sales, someone has to. If you're not good at this, someone has to be good at that. If it has to be done, it has to be done. You can't avoid it because you're scared of it. Can't avoid it because you want to do something different. If the business isn't making money, yeah. then the, your dream dies. It's just a matter of time when. Yeah, it reminds me of that well-used phrase. You know, hope, hope is not a strategy. Right? Hope so. is not a strategy. 
So yeah, the operations need to come before the creativity. Sometimes it's nice to have fancy things and well logoed vehicles, but you know, if you don't have the money to spend on it, go at it without it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Okay. So this now so we're at the point where I kind of give our guests the opportunity for a further old infomercial. So why don't you tell us about uh, our invisible empire services you perform and uh, you know, what's the best way to contact you? Yeah, the best way to contact us is probably just through the website, just www.ourinvisibleempire.com. Um, you can also call the landline of the office line as well and speak to anybody at the desk. And we just, you know, it, it, we provide every service borderline imaginable in small business aside from like medical and legal. And other than that, if it's marketing, bookkeeping, accounting, operations, inventory, social media, strategy, branding, websites, digital presence, any type of marketing outside, inside sales, we pretty much take it all in house. So it's kind of like a one stop shop for small businesses. Oh, excellent. Hey, well, Brad, thanks for sharing your insights and experiences with us today. Really appreciate it. Oh, no problem. Uh, to our audience, remember, you know, you're not alone. You don't have to go through this alone. You know, if any of this uh, resonates with you, give Brad and his team at Our Invisible Empire a call. It'll be one of the best decisions you've ever made. Yeah. So, again, again, thanks, Brad. You know, that's all the time we have for today's episode of Top Dog Tips. No BS business advice. Uh, please like, share, comment. You know, subscribe to us on our, our YYC Business uh, YouTube channel. And if you like what you saw, tell your friends. If you didn't, keep it to yourself. <laughs> I appreciate you having me, Greg. Thanks.